Hey everyone, in today's video I want to talk a little bit about the new Beyonce record. Unless you've been living underneath a rock, you know that Beyonce put a new record out a couple days ago, Lemonade. And she had a pretty interesting launch. The album debuted on HBO. It was put together with a chain of music videos linked in succession, which I thought was brilliant and effective. Then Lemonade was available to stream on Tidal, which is the streaming company that Jay-Z owns and now it's finally on iTunes. So what do I think of the new record? If I had to describe Lemonade in a few words, I would have to say that it is impactful, polished, tight, and very economical. Meaning that I feel like every decision that was made about everything from the instrumentation choices or the hooks or even some of the mixed decisions. I feel like Beyonce makes every note count. Every kick drum, every bass groove, every effect that's added on top of the music, everything made sense and nothing I thought was overused or phoned in musically and lyrically. Lemonade is incredibly polished. Now, I certainly do not consider myself to be a super big fan of Beyonce, but this record smokes. You should definitely check it out. I think it won't disappoint her diehard fans it certainly has the power to appeal to some of her more casual listeners like myself. But in this video, we're not going to be talking about all the good stuff with this record because honestly, there is so much good in this album, my review could be summed up easily in one word. Sincere. There's a strong sense of honesty all over this album, and there's no shortage of passion either. But I can only find truly one issue with this album. And the truth is, it's not unique to this album. Many, many people have heard this argument before, and it's been complained about before. So it's not something that's exclusive to Beyonce. It's in no way a knock on the album itself. It's more of just a criticism of the trends of the music industry today, which in turn negatively affects this new album from Beyonce. It's a pretty big problem to my ears. By now, many of you probably have figured out what my one and only issue is with this record, and that is, it's too f***ing loud. So here's how it went down. So I listened to Lemonade several times through, and I honestly found myself so conflicted. On one hand, I feel like the lyrics and the music, everything is so powerful, and it goes from heartfelt to gritty to uplifting to everything in between. It's an incredibly passionate record. But I also found myself unfulfilled when it came to the depth of that emotional ride. And it's just disappointing to hear all those amazingly powerful messages, both musically and lyrically, just getting squashed to hell. Now, Lemonade is certainly not the loudest album ever made. I mean, there are plenty of other examples that we can talk about till the cows come home. <coughs> Metallica. <coughs> Green Day. <coughs> but the reality is, this new Beyonce record, I feel, is so incredible that it's a shame that it was pushed so far. I think a lot of the build-ups, those gorgeous crescendos, all the ups and downs, those could have been so much more impactful, so effective, if they just didn't squash the living hell out of them. I know that everyone wants to sound louder than the other people's records, and that trend is certainly not going to stop overnight. It's been around for years, it's probably going to be around for more years to come. But the truth is, when an artist decides to master their music to the absolute maximum limit, it does actually suck the emotion and the energy out of the track. Because if you constantly have a record that is at an energy level of 10, then it never really lets you down to a two or a three, so it can build you up again and lift you. The level 10 energy becomes meaningless because it has no contrast. It's like you can't have good without evil because what would good be? Imagine a chorus in a song has a killer hook and a belted out vocal line that's meant to send shivers down your spine and make you feel something. You with me? Well, that chorus, that hook, isn't going to stand out and impact you as much as it could if it's surrounded by a bunch of loud verses. 
there's not enough range. There's not enough space for the energy to drop and then build you up again. Now I know I'm hammering this home, but this album is so impressive I felt like I had to mention this because the faster the so-called loudness war ends, the faster we can enjoy our favorite music on a whole new level that many of us maybe have never experienced before. Everything's remastered now and re-re-re-released. If you have the chance, try and compare a remastered CD of your favorite music compared to its original release if you can track it down. The results are going to blow you away. So one of the ways that we're able to analyze music like this and to determine that level of dynamic energy is by using a tool that's commonly called a dynamic range meter. Technically, this particular type of meter doesn't truly measure dynamic range, but that isn't what I want to talk about in this video. Other terms you may have heard tossed around that more accurately describe this measurement would be something like a crest factor. But for this example, we're going to keep it simple, and we'll say that this measures the dynamic range of an album. Quick sidebar for you audio nerds out there like myself. The crest factor essentially would be a more accurate name because it's the difference between your peak levels and your RMS levels. But what this dynamic range meter does tell us is extremely useful because it still gives us an idea of just how compressed and how squashed the music really is. Pretty much a range of six or less is just pushing it way too hard. And so when I did my measurements on this record here, this is what I got. You'll notice if we look at the information here, you see right off the bat an overwhelming majority of the tracks on this record actually have a peak that's over 0 dB full scale. That's ridiculous. I mean, you have RMS levels of, you know, negative 8 that might not seem like it's a big deal, but that's kind of a big deal, in my opinion. I know that oftentimes mastering engineers really have to balance their professional integrity and decision making while also doing what the client wants. And unfortunately, sometimes you have to give in and not do what you'd rather do for the integrity of the mix, and you have to do what the client asks of you. That's just part of the job. It's an important part of the job, actually. So from this list, we can tell that the peak and RMS levels are certainly very high. But what does that really mean? How can we look at this in a different way? Here I have a Sesex file. Let's open up one of the tracks in Adobe Audition and take a look. Right off the bat, you can notice a few things. Look at the amount of the squashing up here. It's just absurd. I mean, if you look here, you can see that several different areas of just this one track, all of this up here represents pretty much 0 dB. That's how loud it is for almost the entire song. All these different sections are the same. Everything up here is basically hitting zero, which is the absolute loudest possible value you could have. This will tire out your ears real quick if you listen to music that loud for long periods of time. Time out. Okay, audio nerds, I know what you're thinking. I can see you starting to type a comment, but I'll save you the time. Yes, technically there is stuff above digital zero, but even though samples will never go above zero dB full scale, when you play back the music, the waveform that gets represented can exceed full scale. And that's simply going to sound like crap. Just distortion when you listen to it. Just remember, for our purposes, in this video, digital zero is an absolute ceiling. It's the loudest loud. Got it? Okay, let's keep going. So all these areas of the track are wicked loud. And so let's see where the song dips a bit and gives us some release so that we can be built up again for an effective verse or a second chorus. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint, but the lowest it goes is like here and here, maybe here and here. These tiny brief dips and maybe this outro, but that's about it. The majority of this track is just slamming. If we zoom in real close and look at the waveforms, you'll notice that it might not be what you'd expect, which is typical waveforms that have a positive and negative curve to them. I'm generalizing here, so bear with me. Usually, when you think of a waveform, it looks something like this. A top, a bottom, a nice up and down curve. Looks pretty, right? 
Well, the new Beyonce album is so loud that it hits the ceiling and literally is squashed into itself, and now it's a straight line. Like, literally, it's just a straight line at this point. The waveform is dead. Killed. It has ceased to be. It's an X waveform. It's flat. Brick-walled. Squashed to holy hell. Okay, you're probably thinking at this point, Come on, man, wrap it up. You're losing me, kid. But stay with me, because now it's going to get really interesting. What does all this mean? Crest factor, dynamic range, X waveforms. Let me ask you a question. Are you thinking right now, All this doesn't matter to me. I just care about the music and how it sounds. Well, that's the point. The new Beyonce record is amazing. Near flawless artistic vision and execution. But it sounds terrible. It sounds like garbage. Let me explain. You see, when you have a song that is this loud, it just sucks the energy and the life from the music. And so to give you an idea what I'm talking about, let's open up this meter here. I'm going to play the first 30 seconds or so of this track, Freedom, which is wicked good. One of my favorite songs on the whole album. And while it's playing, I'll explain to you what's happening. So for now, focus on these values here, the peak. Don't worry about RMS at the moment, just peaks. I obviously can't play the actual audio of the track for copyright reasons, but you'll still be able to see what's going on. Let's see where the peaks begin and how fast they go up. Okay, here we go. Right off the bat, look at the peak meters at the moment. Look how fast it jumps up. Did you see it? Watch closely. We start off with 4 .8, 4.4, 4.2, 2.5, 1.8, 0.8, 0.7, 0.1, and 0 dB. We've now hit 0 dB full scale and we're 30 seconds into the song. That's nuts. The climax of the song happened in the first 30 seconds? Well, if we go just by the numbers, yes, that's correct. The song Freedom got to the loudest possible loud in 30 seconds. Where can it possibly go from there? The answer is exactly where you think. Nowhere. Nowhere but down, I mean. The song reached its peak in the first 30 seconds. What a waste, don't you think? Look over here at the meters in Audition. They are just dancing constantly in the red. Look, every time I clear the meters, they go right back to zero. It is constantly hitting zero dB, with few exceptions. Now I'm going to leave the track playing in the background, but while it's playing, let's take a look at the dynamic range section here. Dynamic range is essentially the difference between the loudest section and the quietest section. And this plugin is calculating that in real time. So think about those numbers for a second. That number is essentially the difference between your lowest low and when it rises up with the energy to the loudest loud. We're talking a difference of only about 5 or 6 dB. That's not enough, in my opinion. It's just enough of a change for your ears to actually recognize a difference. It's not a substantial difference, but merely an observable difference. That to me is just not good enough. I don't want the emotional ride of listening to a song to just be noticeable enough, in my opinion. I think 3 to 5 dB in general is barely enough to consider a change when it comes to the loudness wars, not scientific comparative studies in a lab somewhere. I mean real world enjoyment of listening to music. 3 to 5 dB is nothing. It's barely any change. I said this earlier in the video, and I'll say it again. The new Beyonce record is amazing, but it sounds like garbage. It's too loud. When you listen to Lemonade, you'll probably think that Beyonce's lyrics are powerful and brilliant, and her music is catchy and energetic. And you'd be absolutely right. You'll probably feel something truly resonate inside of you when you hear her singing. Think of it like this. Do you like this new record? Do you think it's one of the best 
pop albums in a long time? Well, just think of how much better it could sound if it was more dynamic, more engaging, and took you for more of an emotional ride through the journey of the tracks. That is the power of dynamic range. Every time a record comes out and it's hitting zero dB and in the red all the time, it's robbing the listener. It's not letting them appreciate all the hard work that was put into the album. So as we take one last look at this track, which has been playing in the background now this whole time, you'll notice that the peaks appear glued to zero dB. Even when I clear them, they immediately jump back to zero. That's bonkers. That's sad. I hope this video gave you a quick understanding of how awesome the new Beyonce record is, but also how it's way too loud and that it really does end up taking something away from the listener and their experience. As you listen to these loud records, your ear does get fatigued. You may find that songs don't translate very well on earbuds with an iPad or your smartphone. And so my closing argument would be this. The new Beyonce album is great. It should be praised. Highly. It's just, I really would have loved to see Beyonce's new record go in a different direction, to fight the loudness wars and lead by example. It's such a landmark record for many reasons. It would have been nice to have it also be not quite so squashed with the life sucked out of it. But to be fair, like I said, everyone's doing it. Certainly not only Beyonce, and this is not a diss on her record in any way. It's not a reflection of her musicianship or talent. It's simply a criticism of the trends of today's music and how it's doing real damage to the expectations and the enjoyment of the listeners. Go pick up Lemonade today, right now. Check it out. It's on iTunes. If you're a big fan of hers, you're going to love it. If you're a casual listener, this will get your attention. You'll respect it for what it is. You'll probably end up loving it. But at the very least, you'll enjoy listening to it and feel something. If you'd like to see more videos about the music industry or sound design or ASMR or some pro audio gear reviews, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I put new videos out every week. So until next time, remember, the cake is a lie.